Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, as we go into your word, the Holy Bible, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. The title of today's Bible study is Rightly Dividing the Word of Truth. Today, we're going to go into our Father's Word and we're going to find out exactly what the Bible means by that statement, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we're going to start with James chapter 3, verse 1. And there, the apostle James, being guided by God's spirit, wrote, he says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Now, what did he mean by that? Well, when we look up that word masters in the Strong's exhausted concordance of the Holy Bible, we see it's the Greek word 1320. And it means an instructor. And at the end, they got doctor, master, and teacher. So he says to the believers, and anytime he says brethren, he's talking about sisters too. My brothers and sisters, be not many teachers knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation so he says don't be so quick to jump up to want to be a teacher of god's word because with it comes a great responsibility if you are a supposed teacher of god's word and you're not teaching correctly you're causing people to be misled you're putting out false doctrine and you're going to answer for that on judgment day so if the Lord has not called you to be a teacher, then you shouldn't want to be a teacher. You should be whatever it is he called you to be. And I see so many people out there. Every person with a camera <laughs> is shooting a video and putting it on the internet. And 99.9% .9 of these people don't have a clue about God's word, the Bible. They're pathetic. And so... That's why the Lord put this upon my heart to do this particular Bible study. So he says, don't be so quick to want to be a teacher because you're going to receive the greater condemnation. James also tells us how we receive wisdom when it comes to being eyes. James chapter 1 verse 5, the apostle says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him, and it always means her too, let him or her ask of God that giveth to all men, all men and women, liberally, which means freely he gives it to you, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him or her. So if you're lacking wisdom, as God hasn't put it in you to be wise, he says pray for it, and the Lord will give you wisdom. And wisdom is knowledge things you know, and understanding, things you understand about the things you know, being applied. That's what wisdom is. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 
the apostle Paul, being guided by God's Spirit, wrote these words. He says, study to show thyself, which means yourself, approve unto God, a workman or workwoman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What does he mean by rightly dividing the word of truth? Well, when we look up the words rightly dividing in the Strong's Concordance, because those two words go together, it's the Greek word 3718, and it says to make a straight cut. That is figuratively to dissect or expound correctly the divine message. Now, this is of the utmost importance. Because like I said, there's a whole bunch of people out there calling themselves teachers of God. And God didn't call them to teach. And they're just putting out false doctrine. And so he says, again, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. That means you got to learn how to study the Bible correctly. You have to follow the subject and stick to the subject. If you do that, you can't go wrong. People pull things out of context all the time, and that's why they're all confused. So this is what he's talking about. He says in verse 16, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. So we don't have time for foolishness, in other words. What is vain babblings? When we look up those words, vain babbling, it's the Greek word 2757. It says empty sounding, and then it says that is fruitless discussion. So we don't have time for fruitless discussion. A fruitless discussion is anything that's not of God. It's not going to bear any fruit in your life. It's not going to help you be transformed into the image of God. It'll help you be more like Christ. That's a waste of a conversation. We don't have time for that. He says in verse 17, he says, And their word will eat as does a canker. A canker is an ulcer. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. Look at this, 18. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection has passed already and overthrown the faith of some. So he gives us an example of two people who were teaching falsely and how that false teaching affected people who were dumb enough to listen to them. So that's why James said you should not be jumping up and being so quick to want to be a teacher of God because you're going to receive the greater condemnation if you're not teaching correctly. Let's move on. Peter also talked about how there were people out here who wrestled with the scriptures to their own destruction. You know, they wanted to be servants of God, but they weren't submitted to God. And that's why they were trying to understand God's word without his help. Without God's help, you and I cannot understand his word. These things are spiritually discerned. Anyway, Peter says in his letter, 2 Peter chapter 3, I'm going to start at verse 14. He says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye, which means you, may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. 15. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you. Now look at him talking about the wisdom that God gave to Paul and how it benefits us. He says in verse 16, as also in all his epistles, epistles are letters, speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to be understood, Peter says, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own, what? Destruction. So, very important that if you're not called to be a preacher or a teacher, don't you be out there trying to be one. God didn't gift you to do that. He didn't equip you to do that. And he didn't call you to do that. And like I said, there's a zillion people out there, man, who claim that God told them to get out here 
and they don't know the front of the Bible from the back. They're pathetic. And when they do use scripture, they take it out of context or they just add something that's not there. And they're going to receive the greater condemnation. P uh, Peter says they wrestled with Paul's letters to their own destruction. Then he says in verse 17, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye or you also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. So he warns against false teachers and, and the world is plagued with him. And Jesus had to deal with him himself when he walked this earth. We got an example of this in Matthew chapter 22. Verse 23 says, The same day came to him, came to Jesus, the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. Now notice they don't even believe in the resurrection. So they came to him and asked him, verse 24, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now notice they use in the Bible. 25. Now there were with us seven brethren. There were seven brothers, they said. And the first, when he had married a wife, deceased and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. 26. Likewise, the second also and the third unto the seventh. 27. And last of all, the woman died also. 28. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her, so they thought they had Jesus. Now look what he says in verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye or you do err, not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. You don't understand the scriptures, nor do you understand the power of God, Christ said. He says in verse 30, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So he answered their question. He says in the resurrection ain't going to be no marriage. We're going to be like the angels of God in heaven. Then he says in verse 31, but it's touching the resurrection of the dead. Have ye not read or have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God saying? He says, God says in verse 32, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And I'm pretty sure they didn't understand what he said when he said this to them. So he was letting them know, you got it all wrong. And that's the way it is today. You got a whole bunch of people who claim to be ministers. You know, you see them on YouTube and Facebook. These whole bunch of women calling themselves pastor. I'm pastor so-and-so. Really, the scripture says a woman can't be a pastor. That just shows that they don't know the scripture or or they're ignoring the scripture then you got a lot of men that are just terrible they should not be out there trying to teach because they are teaching incorrectly and like i said they're going to receive the greater condemnation so it's very important that you be careful because there's a lot of false teachers out here first john chapter 4 verse 1 says beloved Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they be of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And what does he mean by try their spirits? Well, that word spirit has a lot of definitions, and one of the meanings is the mental disposition, you know, the way a person thinks. And that's how the word is being used here. I'm about to give you a couple of verses to support what I just said. Now let's go to Luke chapter 9. It says in Luke 9, starting at 52, and sent messengers before his face. Jesus sent out his messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. 53, and they did not receive it, because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. So he wanted to come up to Samaria, you know, just to refresh himself as he journeyed to Jerusalem. But they understood he wasn't going to stay with him. So they like, no, we don't want him here. Now tell him, go on, just go straight to, to Jerusalem. Verse 54. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, 
Wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? Elias is Elijah. So they said, Lord, because they disrespected you like that, do you want us to call fire down from heaven like Elijah the prophet did and burn them up? Now look what Jesus says. Verse 55. But he turned, that is Jesus, and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. You don't know what kind of mindset you are of right now. He says in verse 56, For the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. So that's what John was talking about when he says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. And so we have to be very careful <laughs> who we fellowship with and who we associate with. You know, because there's a lot of people masquerading as Christians, and they are not. They're false teachers being misled by Satan the devil. Second John, it's only one chapter, verse 9 uh, through 11. The Apostle John writes there, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, look at this, has not God. Whoever doesn't go by what Jesus says, don't even have a relationship with God. Whoever doesn't stay with the teachings of Christ, which is the Holy Bible from Genesis to Revelation, they don't even have a relationship with God, he says. He says, he that abideth, that means to remain in the doctrine, which means the teachings of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. He says in verse 10, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, what doctrine? The doctrine of Christ. Receive him not into your house, and neither bid him God's speed. Verse 11, for he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. So in other words, he says, if they don't bring the teachings of the Holy Bible, if that's not their doctrine, don't even let them in your house. And don't even wish them well, because if you wish them well, you are partaker of their evil deeds. That's how serious it is to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's very important that you and I do that. If they don't stick exclusively to God's word, he says, they don't have a relationship with God and you shouldn't have anything to do with them. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, even in the Old Testament, it says the same thing. It says to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word, God's word, it is because there is no light in them. And so it's very important that you and I understand the importance of knowing God's word and living accordingly. And the only way we can really understand the Bible is through the Holy Spirit. Very important. We got a lot of people who pick it up and they read it just like anything else and think they understand it, and they don't. You cannot understand God's word without his spirit. That's why Jesus said in John 14, verse 26, he says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, same thing, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, people read this verse and say, see, I don't, have to, I don't need to listen to no man. I don't need to listen to no woman. Because the Holy Ghost is going to tell me everything. And when you, anytime you see a person who claims that God talks directly to them and he doesn't use other people to teach them, watch out. Because a lot of times that's somebody on an ego trip and somebody who's been thoroughly deceived by Satan the devil. Yes, the Holy Ghost is our teacher, but he works through people. Oh, yes, he does. Let's back it up with scripture. Ephesians chapter 4 says, after Christ went back to heaven, this is what he did. Verse 11, he says, and he gave some apostles. What are apostles? People. And some prophets. What are prophets? People. 
and some evangelists. What are evangelists? People and some pastors and teachers. What are pastors and teachers? They're people. Verse 12. Why did he give these men and women these gifts? Verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. For the edifying, which means upbuilding of the body of Christ, which is the church. And so God does teach us through the Holy Spirit, but he works through people. Yes, he does. That's why the Apostle John warned again in 1 John 4, verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So he's teaching us that, yeah, the Lord works through people, but you got to make sure they are of the mindset that God has given them and not of a different mindset, okay? So he works through people. That's why in the Old Testament, Proverbs 27, 17, the wise King Solomon wrote, being guided by God's spirit, iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. So in other words, God uses people to teach other people. That's the way it is. Now, you got some egomaniacs out here who tell you, God talks to me directly. I don't need to listen to no man. I don't need to listen to no woman. Uh-uh, God talks to... Yeah. Everything Minister Porter has learned, the Lord used some men to teach me everything. And that's the way it goes. Now, they sh should be teaching nothing but the Bible correctly. All right? Let me make sure I say that. But he still works to men and women. Now, let's look at an example of what I just said. In Acts chapter 18, starting at verse 24, it says, A certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man. That means God gifted him to speak very articulately. Anyway, he was an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. 25, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Now, he only knew about the baptism of John, and that's what he was teaching. 26, and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. That's the place where the Jews met to worship the Lord, whom went Aquila, and Priscilla, which is his wife, had heard they took him unto them, look at this, and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. So they heard what he was talking about, and they said, okay, he knows about the baptism of John, but he doesn't know anything else. And this husband and wife was used by God to help this young man learn the things that he didn't know. Very important that you and I be humble enough to be taught. Because if you're not humble, God will not send anybody to teach you. No, he won't. You have to be humble. Anyway, they explained, they expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Verse 27 says, and when he was to disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. You see this? Th uh, 28, for he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Notice he used the scriptures. So God uses men and women to teach. Very important. And here's another important thing. Let's go to Acts chapter 17. Verse 1 says, Now, when they had passed from Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. Verse 2, And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Verse 3, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, 
and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Notice God is using this man of God to teach other people. That's how it goes. He uses men and women to teach people. Anyway, he went to, into Thessalonica and he taught them from the scripture, three Sabbaths. Now, when we jump down to verse 11, this is what I brought you here for. It says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. This was in Berea. If we would have read a little further down, you would have saw that he, he went to Berea. Verse 11 says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So it's very important that when the Lord uses a man or woman of God to teach you something from the scripture, you go back and check it out yourself. Very important. You should not just be listening to preachers to learn everything. No, our job, if we really are God's ministers, is to try to help you get hooked on the Bible. Yes, he uses us to explain some things that might be a little complicated, but ultimately, we want to see you become a student of the Word, where you study it every day, praying and asking God for the Spirit to understand it. And that is the of the utmost importance, brothers and sisters, that you get into it for yourself. And there's blessings that come with it. Psalms 1 Verse 1 and 2 says, Blessed is the man, that means woman too, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't go by the counsel of ungodly people. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Don't be around the sinners. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Don't be sitting in judgment of people, talking down to people. Verse 2, But his delight, his or her delight, is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, in God's law, does he or she meditate day and night. That's where you're supposed to be, in his word. You're going to be blessed if you do it. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15 and 16, Paul writes to Timothy, and for our benefit as well. He says, meditate upon these things. What things? The word of God. Give thyself wholly to them. Give yourself completely to the meditating on God's word. Why? That thy profiting, that your profiting may appear to all. You're going to be blessed if you do this. Verse 16. Take heed unto thyself. Take heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine, which means the teachings of Jesus Christ. Continue in them. Stay in the teachings of Christ. For in doing this, thou, you, Shall both save thyself, you're going to both save yourself, and them that hear thee, and the people who hear you. You see what type of blessings that come from meditating in the word and staying in God's truth? We're talking about eternal life on a brand new earth where there'll be no death, pain, suffering, misery of any kind. This is what you and I stand to inherit if we be faithful until death. Anyway... 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, Paul writes, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 17, that the man or woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So that's how important the study of the word is. You, it's vital to become a Christian and to remain a Christian. And then last but not least, Joshua uh, chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, out of your mouth, but thou, but you shall meditate. See it? Therein day and night. You should be meditating in the word day and night. That means studying it and letting it revolve back and forth in your mind, thinking about the things you're studying. He says, that thou, that you mayeth or might observe to, to do according to all that is written therein. That's why you're doing it, so you can live it, not just for head knowledge. He says, for then thou or you shall make thy way prosperous. Then shall you make your way prosperous, and then thou shall have good success. See, you will be tremendously blessed if you live for God, because that's what you're here for. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, 
and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelle. For Zelle, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, Porter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section.